I've owned this rooftop tent for over two years now and I've spent countless nights camping all over the country. But the big question is, would I buy it again? So here are my five pros and cons of my Condor XL roof nest tent. So I've camped probably about 50 nights in our roof nest. I've camped in all kinds of weather, all kinds of climates. So it's safe to say that this tent has been very well tested, including last night, because last night it was super windy. So before we begin, I'm just gonna go ahead and give a brief outline about what the outside of the tent looks like. First of all, you've got the ladder, which is a telescopic ladder. It comes down and you can adjust it so that this part sits flat. It comes with two outside pockets that you can hang on your tent. So first of all, this side is just for kind of little things. We, we normally put the keys to the car here. We've got Strider's leash over here. We're in a dispersed camping area right now, so Strider can roam. And then we've got this other one, which is for shoes. So pretty decent sized pockets and you can put shoes there so that when you are coming down the ladder, all you have to do is just grab your shoes on the way down. Roofness also gave this like mesh outdoor mat that can be placed under the ladder. It's really useful when you're in like a desert or a sandy location because everything just falls right through. So that way you're not bringing it up into the tent. I don't know if they include this with the tent now. I think they kind of change what they're including with their tents. So like most tents, you're gonna have a couple of these window awnings. I'm not quite sure what they're called, but You've got one on each side, and then you also get one in the front here when you put on the rain fly. So the rain fly kind of comes out and it obviously is going to protect you from rain, but because we spent last night in the desert, there was a 0% chance of rain, so we decided to leave the rain fly off. All right, so this is the inside of the tent. Condor XL can sleep between three and four people. I would say three comfortably. Four, you can sleep if you're like head to toe and toe to head. We have done that before. We've slept three, we've slept four. Definitely loads of space for two people. Three is very comfortable and four is a little tight. So the bed is around like an American king size. It's pretty big. We have space here for two pillows and we've also got space on each side that we put our bags and we've also got some space at the end for Strider's dog bed although he never sleeps in it because he just gets so excited when we're in the tent that he can sleep with us so he just ends up sleeping with us but I always leave his bed in here just in case so roof nest has also included this little extra light I think roof nest now includes this like embedded into all of their tents. It has this light strip and basically this just plugs into a USB port. And so we just have our battery sitting up here. We plug it in and then you're able to have light when you're in here at night. And so that's something that's been really, really useful that I love that's included in our roof nest. So the wind has picked up, hopefully you can still hear me. So one thing that we do in this tent is this platform will come over and so you can put a few things in here like as for the bedding, but unfortunately you can't fit a lot. So what we mainly do is we'll just leave a few like really, really flat items in here and you can close the tent. So eventually these struts um, or supports might go out so they don't recommend putting a lot in here, but you can put a few items in here if you just wanna pack them up for the day. So this is one of the larger roof nests. They do have smaller ones. They're kind of called clamshell where they open up like this. Our tent kind of has a little fold in it. So <laughs> our tent kind of has a little fold in it. So you, so you basically open it up like this and then it folds out again. So that's the difference between a two person, a one to two person tent versus a three to four person tent, which this one is. So I have loads of space at my feet. My husband who's 6'2 probably has like an extra foot, maybe even longer of space at his feet whenever he's laying down in the tent. So loads of space in here. There's this little space back here where we put our heads. So in order for us basically not to like fall back into the cavern, that's what we call it. We just put yoga mats here. Nice little space just to kind of prop up your head when you're sleeping. There's also a sunroof at the top. Okay, so that is about it for the tent tour, but now let's get into why you actually came here, the pros and the cons, and would I buy it again? So one of the things that I really liked about a rooftop tent is that it's off the ground and so it feels a lot safer. You're, you're safer from predators, insects, weather, floods for example. So the concept of just kind of being off the ground generally just makes me feel a little bit safer than being on the ground. Another pro is an easy setup and easy takedown. I will say at the beginning that you do have to practice 
setting up the tent and taking it down. And it does take a little bit of practice, but um, since we've had this for over two years, I can do this by myself now. We're pretty quick with it. I could say we could put up the tent in less than two minutes. We can take down the tent in probably about three minutes. We're pretty fast with it now. At the beginning, I'd say it probably took around eight to 10 minutes, but over time, it gets a lot faster. Another pro is, it probably sounds kind of stupid and it looks really like Instagram-y, but you do get some really nice views from at the top. We've stayed in some amazing locations, amazing views, and one of my favorite things to do in the morning is just to open up the front flap of the tent and look at our view for the morning. I try to park the tent in kind of a way where you're gonna see the sunrise because it's just such a nice view sitting in the tent. Sometimes we sit in there and just read in the morning or have our coffee from the tent. I think that rooftop tents are a lot easier to find like flatter surfaces. When you are camping in a tent, it's really, really important to find a completely flat surface, but you can kind of manipulate where you're parking. You can also put chocks behind your wheels and your car. And so you can find a location that's really flat or sometimes we just kind of sleep with our heads up a little bit. That's completely comfortable to us. So you don't necessarily have to have like the flattest surface. You can also go a lot further off-road when you have a four x four vehicle with a rooftop tent on top, instead of like, for example, if you have an RV, it's harder to get off road in all those little small places. We can really go on some small roads and get way off the beaten path and camp in a lot of really cool secluded spots. I've already mentioned that there is a lot of space, a lot of storage space inside. Now this is talking specifically about the Condor XL. Um, like I said, we have space for our dog bed, which is a pretty decent size. We have space for two bags on the side and we would have room for even more if we wanted to put more stuff in the tent. So it's a pretty decent sized tent for a rooftop tent. Another thing I like about our rooftop tent, and this is specific just to Roof Nest, is they have great customer service. When we got our tent sent to us, we had a little bit of issues with the shipping company. They kind of pierced a little bit of hole in the bottom of it. They sent us a whole repair kit for free. They sent us all of the instructions and how to fix it. They were so quick in responding and trying to fix the problem that we had. And a few months ago, I actually went to Loveland, Colorado and went to the Overland Expo. So when I was at the Overland Expo, I actually spoke to RoofNet because the latest generation of rooftop tents have a much better quality on the shell outside. And that's something that we'd really like to do with ours because the plastic is actually kind of peeling away on our shell. And when I spoke to them, they just gave me full instructions to get a better and more longer lasting shell. And all the times that I've had to contact RoofNet customer support, which hasn't been that often, they've just been super responsive really really quick and really helpful with whatever problems that we've come across. I just want to move a little bit because that winter sun is so low and it's going right in my eyes so just want to be able to look at you without squinting too much. Now on to the cons. I don't think it's a surprise that these are really expensive. It's definitely something that we thought about for a few years we had to save up for. It's not something that the average person can just easily afford. We have used it a lot though, so I will say that I'm sure we've got our money back with all of the places that we've been able to go with it. And so this one, when we bought it, and like I said, we bought it two years ago, it was $3,700. If you're someone that maybe only camps a couple times a year and this just looks really fun, I don't really think this is for you. This is for someone who does a lot of camping, really likes to go off-road. If that is you, I do think it's well worth the money if you intend to keep it for a long time. That being said, they do have a Facebook group where you can buy, trade, and sell used roof nests. So if you are interested in getting one for a little bit cheaper, that'd be a great place to start with. So con is something that I've kind of already mentioned. It does take some practice in order to set it up and take it down. If you are a shorter person like me, you probably have to um, grab a stool in order to reach some of the spots because it is a little tricky when you're doing it by yourself, but it does take some practice to get your method down with taking it up and putting it down. So because you are a little bit elevated, this one is probably not a surprise. It can get pretty windy, just like evidence of last night and this morning, that because you are obviously higher up off the ground, you are prone to having a little bit more wind from up here. Now, if any, anyone that's ever camped in a tent knows that when you're staying somewhere that's windy, it's really, really loud, so just bring some earplugs. So one of the ways to kind of lessen the wind is we face the hard shell towards whichever way the wind is going, and that does seem to help. There are struts that are inside and they kind of stop the, the tent from closing on you in the middle of the night because that would be the worst thing to ever happen. Last night, unfortunately, when we got here, it was not windy at all. We didn't expect it to be windy. And then in the middle of the night, it just all, the wind all of a sudden picked up. So unfortunately, 
we were just stuck where we were unless we wanted to get out and try and move the car in the middle of the night, which was not happening. So you are going to lose a little bit of gas mileage whenever you have something heavy sitting on your car. Um, I think this weighs, I can't remember the exact weight. I'll probably put it here. I think it's somewhere between 150 pounds and 170 pounds. And so obviously putting that extra weight onto your car is going to lessen your gas mileage. I only lose two miles per gallon, so I don't think that's really that bad. I leave it on all the time. I know that there are lots of people that have set up rigs in their garage in which that you can lift it and kind of store it on in times that you're not using it. But I don't think trying to do that kind of setup is really worth it just to save two miles per gallon. But maybe if we had a garage that was able to set up that kind of thing, we probably would in the future. So that being said, I do leave this on my car year round. We live in Southern California, so we are in a location where we can easily stay dry and warm in lots of places. We're currently in the desert in mid-November in California. So maybe if you're in a location in which you have a shorter kind of camping period, I know a lot of people take off their rooftop tents during the winter. So it just depends on your location. So the last con is probably one of my biggest complaints that I have about it. And it's just the fact that you have to take the tent down every time you want to move your car. If you are camping somewhere where there's lots of hiking trails off of your campground, that's a great thing that you can do because you can just leave your car there and then go off and do your hikes. But for the most part, we're not in a location where we stay put for several days at a time. We always have to end up driving somewhere in order to go to the places we want to go. So my biggest complaint is that every time we want to move the car, we have to take things out of the tent take down the tent, close everything up, drive for the day, and then we come back to the campsite, we have to open back, put everything back in there. And it does get kind of old once you're doing that for several days. Like for example, in May, we stayed in Grand Tetons for four nights. And if you've ever been to like the Tetons or Yellowstone, you know that everything is really far away. It's a, they're both huge national parks. So there's a lot of driving. After four nights of camping, it got pretty old to be driving the whole entire day coming back, setting up our tent again, next morning, taking it down, taking everything back out. So that is something that I would like to change. Hopefully in the near future, we're gonna buy a small pull behind trailer. Over time, kind of build it up to also be kind of our kitchen where we have drawers that pull out and storage that pulls out so we can put the roof nest on top of the trailer. And that way, whenever we pull up to a campsite, all we have to do is unhitch the trailer from our car, and then we can go out for the day, do what we need to, come back, and our tent will already be set up, and we've got, I wanna have locks on all the drawers so that we can just lock everything away and bear proof everything, so that way that con will be fixed. Hopefully we'll be doing, and I can take you along. Okay, so final thoughts, would I buy this again? Absolutely. I have no plans on getting rid of it. I plan to use it for many years to come. I love the safety feel of being off the ground. I love being able to camp almost anywhere. The only thing that I'm gonna be changing in the future is buying a pull behind trailer so that I don't have to worry about putting up and taking down the tent every time we want to drive somewhere. So if you have any questions about owning a roof nest or just rooftop tents in general, leave me a comment below, let me know, and I'll be happy to answer you. And if you're interested in our campsite setup whenever we're dispersed camping, I've got that video here. And as always, leave it better than you found it, and I will see you next time.